Testing, testing. Hi, this is Liz, a Dairy Public Library's resident movie fan, and it's Friday. We made it through another week, and also I'm saying it's Friday to remind us all of what day it is. Um, and I'm here to give you Freebie Friday, which is streaming recommendations that you can watch for free. I know that not everyone has access to Netflix Prime or Hulu, let alone all three. So, so figured I'd tell you about some sites that do offer free movies to watch. Again, with the caveat that you have to put up with ads, but it's almost like watching TV in the old days. Or as I called it, the early aughts. Uh, up first is on Tubi, again, T-U-B-I. I would be remiss if I did not recommend Terms of Endearment again. I did recommend that on Wednesday when I talked about what was on Prime, but Terms of Endearment is a fantastic movie, and if you don't have Prime, I'd recommend watching it still, and it's free and full on Tubi. Again, just have some tissues handy, and just, um, I would just say marvel in how great Shirley MacLaine is. Everyone's great in that movie, but this is Shirley MacLaine's best work, other than Steel Magnolias, which is a personal favorite of mine. The next thing I'm going to recommend is Road to Perdition. If you're a fan of Tom Hanks and dramatic roles, this movie is, um, I would definitely say underrated or at the very least underseen. It's a 30s era crime drama. If you're into that kind of stuff, it's great. It's also just very well acted and well directed. It's a good serious movie if you're looking for that. If you're looking for something a little older, um, Tubi has the original Dolomite. If that name sounds familiar, Netflix um, released a movie last year called Dolomite Is My Name, but that is about a series of black exploitation movies. Um, that go by that name. So if you're kind of curious of in that field and you want to know like, okay, what was this movie originally like? It's definitely a time capsule. Keep that in mind. Uh, but that is available to watch. And if you're into animation or something for younger kids, but I would say not too young, Don Bluth's classic All Dogs Go to Heaven is on Tubi. Um, I am just going to say personal note. There are scenes that scared the bejesus out of me as a child. I think it's still a very good movie with a good message. I'd say it's Don Bluth's last great film, um, but it, it gets intense. Uh, it's, it gets scary, so I would, I would just put that warning out there. I mean, of course, everyone, everyone is different, but uh, yeah, All Dogs Go to Heaven has some uh, frightening images in it. I'm st I still have nightmares about some of that. Um, now on to Voodoo. So that is one where if you want to pay money, you can watch movies that are currently in theaters or were previously in theaters like um, Invisible Man and Harley Quinn. But again, there are free options as well. So the first I'm going to recommend is a little seen Arnold Schwarzenegger film called Maggie. This is more of a drama than an action film. Um, it's set during a zombie apocalypse, so a little bit topical. Somewhat. We're not turning into zombies. Uh, his daughter, played by Abigail Breslin, is infected and he is trying to save her from the so-called inevitable change. It's, I don't think Arnold is the best actor, but I think he definitely tries and he does a pretty good job here. I think as he's gotten older, he has sought out projects that have a bit more to the depth to them. And uh, I mean, I never have a bad time watching Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, something more lighthearted and definitely more 80s ridiculousness, which is my favorite category, Patrick Swayze in Roadhouse. Uh, need I say more? It's a great movie. It's a cult classic. It's quotable. It's got some great fight scenes in it. It's got Patrick Swayze. How can you not be entertained? Uh, yeah, watch it if you've never seen it. We're going even older into the classic territory now with His Girl Friday possibly the screwball comedy to end all screwball comedies. Uh, Voodoo particular has some good classic movies on there. So if you've never seen His Girl Friday and you want just a nice comedy, somewhat antiquated values, but it was made in the 40s. What are you going to do? But His Girl Friday is an absolute delight. And another classic I'm going to recommend, it's an animated classic, but one geared more towards teens and adults, is 1995's Ghost in the Shell. Other than Akira, this was before we had Crunchyroll, an anime really going mainstream in America. This was the only other big anime you could find in Blockbuster. So for an anime fan my age, this movie has a lot of um, 
weight and meaning because you know it was this and Akira were the only two we could watch essentially but I still think it's a well animated movie it's um the character designs are really neat the plot might be a little um hard to follow but if you are into anime and you want to watch something that really broke ground for it in terms of its accepted acceptance in the United States this is a good movie to watch it's culturally important at this point and also, really, if you're into stuff like The Matrix, huge influence for it. On to Crackle, um, which I'm going, the more I'm going through, that one has a really good um, uh, selection of movies. First, I'm going to recommend, if you like aliens and sci-fi, Attack the Block. So this is a British film that came out in 2010, 2011. It's about a bunch of boys who live in the, the block, which is a, the British equivalent for like the projects, a high raise apartment, low income um, residents who fend their home, um, fend off aliens. And the alien design is really cool. They actually look more like big dogs than anything else. And this movie is really significant because it is the first on-screen appearance of Star Wars' John Boyega. This is his film debut, so if you're a fan of him and you want to see his first movie, uh, he's been running from aliens since way before Star Wars. The other one I'm going to recommend is The Big Chill. Definitely a classic. Um... I think it holds up fairly well. I watched it last year, and I I think I'd heard a lot more about this movie um, that was a little bit unflattering, but I think it's a very good movie. And if you want something that's fairly even-tempered, there's really no shouting matches or any really high emotional points, it's just a hangout movie. This is a great movie, and also, going back to cultural significance, I wouldn't say this is the movie that started the soundtrack movie, but it is the movie that put soundtracks and movie selections for a picture, um, or soundtrack selections for a film on the mat. This was the movie that made soundtracks famous. So again, a little bit of film history in there. Uh, the final recommendation I'm going to have for Crackle is a personal favorite, Nicholas Rogue's Don't Look Now, starring Donald Sutherland and Julie Christie. This is about a married couple after losing their daughter in an accident. They go to Venice to try and just work through their grief, and sort of on the precipice of that is a series of murders going on. And while they're there, they meet a pair, a pair of psychic twins that tell them that they can get in contact with their uh, lost daughter. It's wonderfully filmed, great performances from everybody. I'm always down to watch a Donald Sutherland movie. He's my favorite actor. And this movie was actually out of print for almost 15 years. The Criterion Collection ended up releasing it um, and pretty much saving it from not obscurity, but from, I guess, out of print purgatory. And I'm glad it's on a free service now so more people can watch it. It's got a fantastic ending. This is one I'll tell you, don't read up on it. Go into it completely blank. It's a great ride to take, and I hope you all enjoy it. One more recommendation, and this is something you can find free on YouTube, um, because pretty much unless it's a new movie, uh, there are a, lot, a whole lot of copyright holders that don't care. They worry about Avengers getting on YouTube, not some movie from the 60s. And a good movie from the 60s that's on there, although I hesitate to call it good, but it's watchable and fun, is Valley of the Dolls. Um, I would say this is a great example of camp in the definition that is its failed seriousness. It is not trying to be funny, but there are some moments in there that are incredibly overwrought. You can't help but laugh. But this movie has been reevaluated over the years, and... When I watched it, I'm like, there is a lot of this movie that does, I mean, it veers hard into melodrama, but there is a place for melodrama in cinema, and there are actually parts that work. I think Susan Hayward is great. I think Patty Duke is, she's definitely swinging for the fences, and some of it go is campy, and then there's other scenes where she sells, um, and Sharon Tate, I think, is really good, and she's... This is pretty much her, um, it's this and two other movies she had. This was the movie that put her on the map, and she has just a very natural screen presence, and everyone talks about how pretty she is, but she's someone who was very talented, and I think had she not had what happened to her not happened, um, she probably would have had 
a great career and if anything might have gone the comedy route sort of what Goldie Hawn did 10 years afterwards. Um, so yeah, if you've never seen Valley of the Dolls and you want a good camp classic, now's the time to watch it and you can watch it for free on YouTube. Um, thank you for sticking with me for another week. I hope you guys enjoy this uh, over the weekend or at least one of these movies. And I'll see you next week. And as always, uh, a list of the films recommended will be in the comments below. Have a good weekend.